probably make Heather the host. And Heather, if you want to make me a co-host, I will stay on for a little bit and do the waiting room for you, but I'm going to try to get off before the end of this. And you know what? I can, um, I can do the waiting room easily. It's not that hard to do, Jen. Seriously. Okay. It's really not that bad, but, um, can you, it's still recording. It doesn't say it's recording on yours now that I made you the host. It says it's recording. Yeah. How do I make you a co-host? I've never had to do that. Uh, you hover over my name and where it says more, you hit that little drop down and it'll say make co-host. Oops. Make co-host. There we go. There you go. You should be all set, right? Yeah. Yep. I can start whenever. All right. Are you all set, Donna? Yes. I think I saw principals and Kathy's not here, and I think I saw Dell. Kathy won't be here. She has had her first class tonight, and she had to yep. do that. So. Yep. So everybody else that needs to be here will be here. All right. All right. So welcome everybody to the Cape Elizabeth School Board meeting, Tuesday, September 8th, uh, 2020 at 6.30. It's our regular business meeting, uh, followed by an executive session afterwards. Um, we're meeting via Zoom due to the town hall regulations, which uh, we consider doing it live in town, uh, um, in town hall, uh, but that wasn't feasible. So um, we're working on trying to get back in there um, the other benefit of this is that um, if we were to be in town hall, we'd have to limit the amount of participants that could actually enter the room. Um, and so this way it's open to as many um, that would like to participate. So um, if we can all stand, I see Donna's outside ready for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag, the flag of the United, United States, States of, of America, America and, and to the Republic of for which, which it stands, stands one, nation, one nation under God, God indivisible, indivisible, with liberty and justice, and justice for all. All right. So um, thank you everyone again for being here. Before we actually even get started with item one, I just want to give a shout out, a huge hooray, and an amazing congratulations to everybody for getting us to September 8th. The first students went into school today. Um, the reports I hear is that it went relatively smoothly. Um, so just deep gratitude to everyone. Principals, you should be giving yourselves a huge pat on your backs. Vice principals, nurses, um, Pat Fowler, um, everybody. I, I know I'm forgetting somebody and I should have made a list that I don't forget anybody, but I think um, this is a true, uh, testament to, you know, it really takes a village and that we all came together to make today happen. So thank you very much. Um, are there any adjustments to the agenda? And I'm not seeing any. So moving on, may I have a motion for the approval of the minutes from August 18th, 2020. I move we approve the minutes from August 18th, 2020. May I have a second, please? Second. Thank you, Laura. Any questions or comments? Okay, all those in favor. Heather Altenberg is a yay. Kimberly Carr. Yay. Phil Saucier. Yay. Elizabeth Seifries. Yay. Nasser Shear is not here tonight. Hope Straw. Yay. And Laura Danino. Yay. Excellent. Um, the next item on the agenda is comments from the public. Excuse me. Um, I would just like to remind everyone this is a unique platform, Zoom. We're starting to get used to it, but different from town hall. But we are trying to conduct the board meeting in the way that we do in town hall. So comments are limited to three minutes. Um, there's a total of 20 minutes for comments, for public comments. The comments have to be related to something on the agenda. And if you do speak, 
um, if you could say your name and your address, raise your hand and I will call on you. So is there any, are there any comments from the public? I see somebody, yep, Wynn Phillips. Hi, Wynn. You were. Hello, I know, I was muted, I'm, I'm, I'm learning. That's Thank okay. Sometimes. Um, so I, I just have a few things. Uh, I, had, I thought I was going to have it all written out, but the day got the day got away from me. So anyway, I want to I want to first of all thank you um, uh, as the chair of the board for responding to the, the many emails that you received from staff about the concerns of uh, surrounding reopening schools. <clears throat> I want to thank uh, Superintendent Wolfram for for. Um, Working closely with the association. Oh, I'm sorry. I was supposed to say my name. Should I come back to that? So it's Wynn Phillips. I'm a teacher at the Cape Elizabeth uh, High School, and I'm also um, president of the Cape Elizabeth Education Association. So anyway, I wanted to thank the, the superintendent for working closely with the association uh, to, to resolve problems and answer questions, and I certainly hope that that continues, and she's given me no reason to, to not think it, it will continue. Um, so, um, and I'd like to thank both the board and the superintendent for keeping those channels of communication open. And I'm speaking tonight for that very, for that reason, and that, that communication is, is perhaps the, the number one priority during this very difficult time that, uh, that we're facing. Um, I know that, um, I know that each, uh, at each board meeting, principals speak about what is go going on in their schools, and often that uh, what they say is is positive, and um, I'm not saying that they hide the, the the dirty stuff in the corner. But you know, you know, it's it, there. There probably are things that they certainly don't want to talk about uh, publicly. But I think at, at in this time, we have to be very willing to just admit to where things aren't going right, and to where things are going right, and to really work on those things where um, where we're having where we're having issues. I know that we have, uh, as far as the staff is concerned, we have teachers who are very happy to be back. We have, um, we have teachers who are excited to, be, to, to uh, learn the new technology and use it and, and expand upon that. We also have old guys like me who, have, um, who are not digital natives who are struggling with the technology and worry about um, that learning curve interfering with the progress uh, uh, that our students um, need to make because I, we, we all know that they're a little bit behind because of what happened at the end of last year. Um, we have teachers who f feel safe. We also have teachers who are, who are terrified of contracting COVID. Um, and coming back to my original point about teachers um, um, having a voice and feeling that communication is so important, um, I just I, I think it would be great if if the board and and the superintendent could make time to get into the schools or or to arrange something with our teachers to speak with them and to see what's happening to even see um, you know to, to see how it operates to, to watch kids already you know I'm in the hallway saying six feet six feet you know to see to see what's happening to understand it and to listen to the teachers and to hear their hear the, both their celebrations because there will be there will be many of those, but also those real concerns that they have in each and every school. And I know that the principals can't touch on all of that. And I'd be I'd be happy to be the the, the conduit for for relaying that information at board meetings. But I think it's important that teachers have a voice um, and continue to have a voice. Um, during this, this what is just a, a something that obviously we have never experienced, and it's a, a very difficult. So um, I think my three minutes is probably up. Ben. Thank you, Wynn. I think that's a very interesting idea to to think over and and definitely contemplate. So thank you for bringing up the thought. Are there any other comments? Okay. I'm not seeing any other hands. So we're going to move on to the next item, which is uh, comments from student representatives who are not here tonight. I don't believe they've been chosen yet. Is that 
correct, Jeff? Correct, Heather. We, They've not been chosen? Yeah, we have to do that sometime in the next couple of weeks. It didn't happen last spring because of everything else. So you're right. Got it. Yeah. Okay, great. Thanks. Um, we have some presentations. Um, Donna, would you like to speak? Sure. So we're here tonight to, um, to celebrate Andy Strout. Um, he has retired um, and he is not with us tonight because I think he's up north fishing or something, um, have, enjoying his retirement already. Anyway, I thought I'd just um, talk a little bit about Andy because there's probably some things that maybe you don't know about him. And then Troy also has some things to say. So Andy started in our district in 1983 as a teacher's aide and he worked at the high school. Then in 1984 to 85, he accepted a position as the middle school phys ed teacher. And he has been there ever since from what I could see in my research. So according to my calculation, he's worked for the district for 37 years. Um, he's also worked as the JV soccer coach, uh, varsity soccer assistant coach, as varsity boy tennis and soccer coach, as an assistant varsity ice hockey coach, as the assistant uh, athletic director at the middle school, as a student council advisor at the middle school, as a freshman girls soccer coach and an assistant girls soccer coach, as a basketball timer and as the allied arts team leader. So he has been a busy guy and has, um, has given a lot to our district. So um, personally and professionally, as I would just like to thank him for, for all the work that, um, that he's done and all the time he's given to the district. So Troy? Sure. Um, so I, I had um, I spent some time running around the building trying to get some good stories on Andy and I was successful. I just can't share many of those stories because they would always go down a path and then it would veer off. And I, so um, when you're in a place for 30 some odd years, I think you, there's a lot of stories to tell. And um, Joe Doan did give me one that he said that he, Andy convinced him to go to Hilton Head with I think a group of tennis players or something. Um, they each had to drive a van, they were, had to get back to the airport. And when they were leaving, Joe said, oh, Andy, we're gonna be late. And he's like, no, no, I got a shortcut. And he said, 10 minutes later, they, they were lost and they both got pulled over for speeding and got tickets written to them driving a van 20 years ago with kids in it. So Joe said, I never followed Andy Stroud again. Um, but it's and the thing that Andy is truly a part of, of Cape Elizabeth Middle School. He has been there for years. You know, he, he's, you know, you've been there a long time when you are educating the kids of former students that you've had and, um, it's just always nice to be able to go down the hall and say, hey, tell me about this or tell me about that. And he has firsthand knowledge. So in being a phys ed teacher and Kathy, if she was here, she would verify this. Andy took that job very seriously. Um, when it came time to talk about standards and how they should be entered in the grade book, he had true passions and beliefs about his program and, and where it was at. Um, he also would, and he may be telling me the truth, I just do not know. Um, but he claims to have potentially the most state championships of any person in, in state high school sports um, over the years. So I think it was around 57 or 58 that he was a part of. So that's pretty impressive. And the number of kids that he impacted is just phenomenal. I could call him tomorrow and we could say, hey, you know, we're a little behind. We need to weed whack the tulip bed. And he would be there with it and it would be done. Um, you know, so that's just the kind of guy he is and the pride he has. Um, in the schools and, and that'll definitely be missed. It's already, we already feel that absence. So um, anyways, we're, we were lucky to have him. And the day he called me this summer, he's like, hey, I was gonna go one more year. I really wanted to, but I didn't start with remote and I'm not gonna end with it. <laughs> so that was, kind of, that was kind of how he said, it's just not for me. And he wanted to do it his way. So I really appreciate Andy a lot. And you know, he's a valuable member of our, of our school. So he'll be missed. Great. I think he taught my husband. Right, Garth? Did Andy throw up to you? Yes. <laughs> so, all right. Well, good luck to you, Andy. Thanks for all that you've given the district. We next have uh, Peter Estadito, Director of Nutrition Services, about meal ordering plan. 
Hi. First off, I'd like to congratulate Andy. Um, I just had a little story I'd like to share. Um, we did a, uh, a community garden down at the high school where in the summer program, we, um, we grew some produce and actually had a cooking class. And he was the first one to come and say, what do you need? And I'm like, well, I need that land rototill. I will say that he came without question, came, wrote it till the garden, and we had that thing up and running, and we had a full program where we had a full garden at the high school for um, a few years, and uh, I just wanted to thank him for that, but that's the kind of guy he is. So um, first off, I want to say congratulations to him. Um, second off, uh, I'm going to start with our meal ordering plan. Um, what we've done is we've purchased the software, and um, I had spoke on it before, um, today was the first day that we utilized it, which um, actually went very well, um, considering we had um, all, all of the, um, the data that we needed, but we do, do need to delineate it between different schools. Um, so there, there are some options that we need to add and some things that we need to change according to different schools. So, um, but the ordering option, option is there. Um, also, we have the option for students to order if they're remote. Um, those days in the building, they can order their lunch, but also we have the availability in the menu for the option to do the hybrid, which we would also send food home, and the remote, which we would send food home for the five days if they choose to order it. Um, one of the other things that I wanted to bring up as we work through this process, I, I, I want to thank uh, the board and Donna for having the, the role in as we um, muddle through um, all these different changes and trying to get up to speed. But um, one of the things that we were and I'm excited about sharing is um, <clears throat> on Friday afternoon, I was able to secure a waiver um, that would allow all our students, regardless of um, status, free, reduced or paid to eat for free. Um, that will be in effect until December 31st. And again, that means all students will be uh, free, uh, free of charge. So uh, every student in our district, uh, no matter what age it is, we will be able to feed them. And like I said, we will be doing, um, we have the remote option menu on our, on our web page, and we also have the five day remote or the uh, hybrid model menu, which parents can order. Um, like I said, we're working through it. We're trying to fine tune it. Um, we need to switch up some data for different schools, the way it's set up. Um, but I'm confident by the time we're ready to roll full, full board, that we'll be up to speed and everything will be great. Um, today, we did um, our first day with lunch. Um, I thought it went very well, considering that we haven't been in the building for six months or so. So I would just like to give a big shout out to my staff. And I also would like to give a big shout out to my assistant, Robin Taylor, who her and I have been working different hours and we've been working with the software um, people which are in Colorado. So we've been having meetings at night uh, in their time zones. So, um, and, and, and I think we're gonna be ready to roll in the, after the two week rolling period. Um, and we will be trying to set up a uh, online, some kind of video that will actually help with um, muddling through the whole online process. Um, it is very simple. And uh, if anybody was to go through, we did send out some information, but we are in, uh, currently trying to create some kind of um, video that would allow, allow them to do that. So, um, I guess that's all I have, and uh, thank you. Thank you so much for that, Peter. I think it's um, fabulous when we can provide food for people, especially in such a difficult time. So I appreciate Definitely that agree. update. Yeah. You're um, welcome. Yeah, thank you so much. Um, okay. So next up are some administrative reports. We've got principals. I'm gonna let you duke it out. Let's start with Jason. <laughs> All right, go ahead, Jason. Sorry, I was just noticing something. Thank you. <clears throat> so today, um, we 
we were just so pleasantly surprised how well today went and so many things came together uh, after, after so many months of work. Um, just to kind of start with some of the other, some of the various departments. So, um, you know, given all of the, um, the uncertainty and, and the difficulty in communication, it appeared, uh, you know, it wasn't perfect, but uh, busing seemed to completely just work and go off without a hitch, it seemed very smooth. Um, lunch worked very well. Um, it was, it, it appeared almost like we've been doing it for, for a while, doing this, um, this pandemic version of, of school. I was just very pleased. Um, I walked throughout the entire building a few times and um, touched base with almost every single staff member um, individually. And uh, there was a lot of joy in the building today to have kids back, certainly some uncertainty, but um, a great appreciation for the rolling start. Um, I think it, it just did uh, wonders for our students and for our teachers. We, you know, we identified some areas that need some tweaking, um, but I think we've got a lot of the logistics figured out. The, you know, where we really need, want to focus our time now is, you know, on um, listening to teachers and working with teachers and learning about what their experiences are like in this situation and supporting them in supporting our students. Uh, so I, I couldn't be more pleased with, with the work that the entire staff uh, did today at Pond Cove. Everybody went above and beyond, um, offered, offered their support in different situations, checked in with me to see if there was anything else they could do more. It was a, really a proud moment for our school, but we know that it's not going to be easy. Uh, but I think, I think we're going to do this very well. Thank you, Jason. Yes. Troy. Um, yep, I would, I would totally agree with everything that Jason said. We were, you know, I, I want to say that we're, we were surprised, but I think we had hoped that it would go very smoothly and it, and it really did largely because of the kind of soft start and the, the slow roll in plan. And I think that was, I think it would be very different if we'd had all kids in the building today, just the pressure would have kind of overwhelmed us at times, but um, no, it, it was wonderful to see that the school community come together. Um, teachers were outlining on the road, welcoming kids as they came in, they were covering all the entrances. Um, we've had to use up more of the parking lot because of all the different drop offs. So teachers had to park further away and, and walk further and um, you know, it's just, and it was all good and it was good to see kids. And I know they were smiling under the mask, even though it was really hard to see it. Um, so, but you can just tell with the eyes are shiny and twinkly. It was, I don't know, it was just, it was really neat to have the kids back in the building and um, to go into the rooms, you know, it is a, definitely a, a different feeling and it's a little weird. And I'm sure it was weird for kids to be six feet apart and with masks on and, you know, it was a little more quiet. And I assume that's probably they're going to realize they can talk through those Macs pretty soon. And I'm sure that the level of noise will go up a little, but um, it was just really impressive. And to see, you know, the busing and, and lunch was great. It's all of the structures in the school go together when kids are there. Um, so it was really helpful and nice. There's just not enough thank yous to go around for everybody. I mean, just two weeks ago, we had to remove half the furniture out of our buildings and, you know, get, storage units. And, and I just don't know, I hope everybody realizes the totality of that effort that it took, um, largely from our custodial staff. I mean, it's, it's just an impressive feat to go down our hallways and they look shiny like none of that had happened. So um, a lot of really hard work's gone on. I would say the next hurdles for the middle school, um, we're still getting remote requests for kids to go to remote. Uh, and it's starting to throw some of the numbers off and the potting and so there are some really small groups. So it might be some regrouping and reshuffling of staff again as we go, I anticipate. And the next thing is really trying to get power school caught up with what we're asking it to do. Um, you know, I think it's sometimes poor power school. It's, it sounds like a great tool and it really is, but we are using it in a much different way this year, just structurally. So um, parents, please be patient as we complete updating power school and getting everything accurate. The kids all have hard copy schedules, so they know exactly where they're going. Um, and, it, and it went really well today, but I know 
Kate in the office and they're working really hard to kind of catch those things up. And it's a bit of a moving target, but uh, great day today. Super fun to see kids in the building, um, to stand and chat with them at the bus loops and parents were super patient at the bus loops because some of them are new and, and a little, a little bit clunky, but they work. Um, so great day overall, total success. I think it really energized our staff to see kids in our building. Um, so it was a great, I would say it was a great success. Thank you. It's great to hear. Jeff. I would, <clears throat> I guess, echo a lot of the same things. It was overall a good first day. Um, uh, our, I, I think I summarized in a letter to parents and an announcement at the end of the day, I gave the kids 100 for mask wearing um, and a 90 for social distancing. They were, they slipped a little bit during the fire drill, but uh, but they got it and uh, they overall, it was really good. I was really pleased with the cooperation from the kids and, and with the help of the, the staff. Um, Heather, you said it takes a village and, and it really does. And I know the other principals have thanked people and I can't not thank people. Um, I could thank everybody in the school, but I certainly will mention Pat Fowler and Bossing, Robin Taylor and Peter Esposito and food services. Um, just rolling with the punches, last minute flexibility changes. Um, I have to say Carolyn Young and Ginger Raspiller, literally almost everything we are doing would literally be impossible if it connects with technology without them. They are absolute gems. Um, Noel Matthew and, and uh, the entire tech staff, uh, we now have outdoor Wi-Fi, uh, which we didn't two weeks ago. That's an amazing asset. Um, all the ninth graders got their iPads and other, other students will be getting it tomorrow. Karen Jenkins, who's our school nurse, the health training today. She's going to be doing health training just about every day the first two weeks of school. She's done an amazing job. Um, and in a short time that she's been here, I think she's earned the respect of staff and students. Um, I, I do want to give a shout out to Jeff Dorick. Um, uh, he, he's a man of many, 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 many skills. And over the past three days, he literally put down 4,000 feet of tape in the high school uh, 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 hallways to mark out essentially no walking zones, um, which has been remarkable. And then he told me he just ordered another 4,000 feet of tape um, to do some additional work. So it's really amazing what he did. Um, Nate Carpenter, um, who, um, who has spent literally days and days and days and days and days for weeks um, working on the schedule for the first two weeks, um, which was great. So today our students um, were, mostly were in advisory groups. Uh, there was, they received health and safety training from Karen. There were a number of icebreaker activities. They received tips for succeeding at CEHS from both staff and, and older students as well who are upper links. Um, they heard about emergency procedures from David Galvin, who did a great job with that. They got their iPads, they set up their iPads, we had a fire drill, um, and then we were done. Um, I will say, just sort of echoing a little bit in terms of when, the one area that I think teachers do have some questions about is understanding ventilation issues at the high school. I think particularly now with the weather good and windows and doors open, I think most people are feeling pretty comfortable, but I think there are questions that are definitely lurking out there um, and over the next days and weeks. Um, I, I, I think there are lots of good questions that I'm, I'm hoping that we'll be able to answer as well as teachers and obviously students and parents as well uh, deserve to have them answered. There's just a lot of fast, fast moving information in those areas, different reports and and they all settle some questions and then to some extent they raise some other ones as well. So just an issue to be on your radar. Overall, a good day at Cape Elizabeth High School. Thank you so much for all the support that you've given uh, the staff and students. So thank you. Phew, the three principals have spoken and said that it all went okay. That's really amazing. Thank you. Um, next up is Marcy, our business manager. Oh, you're muted, Marcy. You're still muted. Okay, great. Sorry. Um, if somebody would like to make me a co-host or... Yep. And I'll do screen share. Uh, 
Okay. Should be co-host now. Perfect. Thank you. All right. I'm not going to do that one yet. We're going to do so many, so many thing, fun things to pick from you guys. Let me see if I can hard to see that. Okay. Whoops. Sorry. All right. The first thing I'll talk about tonight is um, one of the CRS. I can't. Yeah. Did you want us to see a screen? I can't see a screen anymore. Oh, you're not seeing a screen anymore? No, we did. You did? Okay. And now I don't. Let me try again here, Heather. Because I want you guys to be able to see that. Okay. Are you seeing something now? Yes. Yep. Yeah, okay. Yep. All right. Let's do. Oh, just... There we go. Yeah. The ACT grant. The Perfect. CARES ACT grant. Perfect. Okay. You see that? Yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Um, Superintendent Wolfram will talk about some of the other CARES ACT grants um, during her time, but this is one of them that we just applied to last week and we wanted to um, let you know that this is in the works. And it's part of a $25 million allotment of money that the state has set aside for school districts to apply to. These funds, the, the CRF 2020 main day, main day programming for school age children corona, coronavirus relief funds are specifically set up for school administrative units in creating day programming for the school community. And it's for school age children up to 14 years of age. And this is to help support the hybrid and remote learning models for teachers. So we have applied for a total of $71,777. And that entails $6,000 for a rental of a tent um, snacks for 18 weeks of 8,100, health and safety supplies, and, if I didn't, and then the staffing for 56,677. So we will be waiting to see what happens with that. Um, it could be soon and it could be a little bit longer to hear, but we will keep everybody posted. And it's to help out with Cape specifically the Cape Care through the town of Cape Elizabeth. Okay, Are there any questions about that before I move on? Okay, so the next thing I wanted to talk about is um, the annual timeline by quarter. I thought what I'd do tonight is just give you a, a quick overview of what you can expect during the year. Um, the flow of what happens in the business office and with our superintendent. So I broke it down by quarter and we've already, we're in the first quarter, it started in July. We, we had our audit. So we went through our full audit um, with, our, with RKO auditors this summer. And we just finished up a couple of weeks ago. We have reported to the state for our old and new fiscal year budgets and actuals for last fiscal year. We've been submitting for CARES Act grant, grants, plural, this summer. And then we prepared our first set of financials that I'll present to you in a second. Quarter two, and, and this is typical for most of our years, quarter two, we'll start beginning the budget planning for the new fiscal year. Um, we'll make sure all the invoices are submitted for our federal grants for the first quarter. And we'll start doing a full analysis of position control reports. In the third quarter, you'll be seeing an audit report from RKO, our official audited financials. Our budget meetings will begin. Subsidy information is received from the state and we get our health projections, health insurance projections along with some other things during that quarter, quarter three. Quarter four, we start to measure our fiscal year success. We start having our final budget meetings and we get the budget adopted. We have our year end closing. And then we start 
measuring and analyzing progress and getting ready for our new fiscal year of 2022. Any questions about our quarterly timeline? Okay. All right, so the next thing I'd like to show you is where we are right now. So our financials that we just prepared, we have for the end of August, the uh, typical spending rate would be 17%, and we are at 13.8% right now. And last year at this time, we were at 15% spent. So we're a little bit ahead of, um, you want me to push admit? <laughs> um, so we're doing uh, fairly well. So any questions? And before I stop sharing the screen and Okay. No. Good. All right, I'll get back in here, Heather, and I'll try to Oh, okay. Elizabeth Elizabeth has raised her hand. Okay. So go yes. ahead, Elizabeth. Hi, Marcy. So Hi. I'm looking at um, other instruction, which looks like it's, I, I'm not sure what's in, you know, encompassed in other instruction, but that seems to be up quite a bit from last year. Oh, you know um, what I'll do, Elizabeth, because I don't have last year's right in front of me. I can run that analysis and see what's happening on each individual. I have the capability of doing it by line. And I can that be interesting for the board to know. Yes, definitely. And then I can send that out by email if that works. Definitely. Okay. Thank you. You're yeah. Welcome. Okay, any other questions for Marcy? Okay. Marcy, do you have more to share or does that conclude that your concludes. presentation? Okay. Um, next up is Kathy Stenger with the Director of Teaching and Learning. She's not here tonight, as Donna had mentioned earlier, but she did um, put a packet in uh, a write-up in. Um, I don't think it's worth reading. It's posted on the website. Anybody who wants to access that and look at that information, um, they can do so on their own time. Um, we then have Del Peavy, the Director of Special Services. Hi, Del. Oh, hello. Good evening. I have a couple of things to share with the board tonight. Um, one of the pieces was um, we had created a social, emotional, mental health committee um, as we come into the uh, school year and looking at the uh, needs with regard to the pandemic. And the committee has met a couple of times. One of the things that came out of it was that they agreed to have Leah Howe, who is an adjunct faculty member of Lesley College, uh, do um, uh, trauma sensitivity training with the staff at each building and that was conducted uh, last week and the uh, feedback that I've received from staff is that they were very appreciative of the work that um, when the time the training that was shared with them also um, this the committee has also worked on each school sent out surveys to parents uh, these surveys were um, brief questionnaires with regard to um, how their students are doing with the pandemic. Every family is in a different place and the committee's role was to try to figure out what uh, unmet, unmet needs there may be with regard to our students um, and they will continue that work. And the committee, I should say, consists of social workers, um, counselors, um, and that include guidance counselors, um, psychologists, um, and I believe that was all of them, but, uh, and a lot of them uh, uh, 
We're the ones creating those surveys and sending them out at their individual schools. A lot of that work will continue um, with the building admin uh, playing a role in that as well. Um, I do want to mention that uh, team, the special education teams at all three schools have really stepped up as they've been creating uh, learning plans for our students that are both remote and in-person learning plans and schedules. And they've worked very hard uh, over the last week to pull that all together. And I wanna thank them. And of course, I'm very proud of the work they've done. Um, right now, we're currently servicing 169 students in special education. We have 17 students in referral and we have two students outplaced. Thank you. Thanks, Del. Uh, Donna. So I, I want to thank all of the people that really have already been mentioned and um, we, can't, we can't forget the bus drivers because I'm not sure that they, they came up, but um, I was, as I was walking from the high school to the middle school today, um, one of the bus drivers had the bus stopped and I just stuck my head in and I asked her how things were going and she was just so positive and she said, great, the kids are great. She had done one bus uh, run already. And uh, so they have, um, they, the bus drivers have really stepped up. They've been so positive um, and uh, they're, they're doing a great job. So they got, they got our kids to school on time today, uh, pretty much, and um, just a great job. So, so thank you bus drivers too. And Pat Fowler, within less than a week had the whole bus schedule together and that was absolutely amazing so so thank you pat so i did visit all three schools today um and i think everyone was pretty happy with with the roland situation that it really gave us a chance to look at what was going on in our schools and kind of test our procedures and protocols uh, so at just to give you a little picture of what was going on at the high school this morning when i, I got there um, and the, the students were just arriving and they had tables set up and they were checking, uh, checking the students in um, and they were checking to see uh, if the parents had signed their contracts, which we had a really good uh, success with. Most of the parents had signed their contracts. Um, the students would check in and then there were tour guides, other students, older students who were the tour guides and they took them to their advisory groups if the, the ninth graders didn't know where they were going. And I walked inside and talked to some of the teachers and the, I saw those uh, 4,000 uh, feet of tape or 4,000 yards of, of tape on the, the hallways and they are truly, really, there's arrows all over the place uh, showing you which way to go and stay on this side going up the stairs and this side going down the stairs and um, it was it was pretty amazing uh, so that was that was really exciting and, and the kids were just so excited to be there and then i went to the middle school and i they had started their classes and i think troy and i walked around i think we hit almost every school uh, or every classroom again the um there was tape all over the floor telling people, telling the students where to go. And we went in and saw the two nurses uh, rooms um, in all of the schools, the, the nurses have to have two, two rooms, one for students who just have kind of minor, um, minor issues and then others, uh, another room for students who um, might have COVID related issues. So in all the schools, the nurses have their offices set up and um, it's, it's really a, a great system. Um, you know, as Troy was saying and, and the other principals, the classrooms are set up with the six feet of distancing. So it was really, it was great to see kids in the, in the, the, the uh, classrooms. It was, it was different. Um, but it was great. And then I went in, the, um, Jason and I went into every single Pond Cove uh, classroom and um, they, but I stood outside waiting um, as the students arrived. Um, some of them were dropped off with buses, by buses, and some of the parents dropped them off. And the kids were so great and there were all kinds of staff members around as, as there were in, in the other schools directing. And they told the students where to go and the, the little guys got out of the car and went down the right little path and their teachers were waiting for them. And it was just, it was like, 
this wasn't the first day. It was like they had already done this days and days and days and knew exactly what to do. So um, it was great. The, the teachers in their classrooms were instructing on hand washing and uh, different, the different routines that you would expect to see um, going on the first day of school in, in an elementary classroom. And again, the, all, I didn't see one, um, one little person in Pond Cove without their mask on. They all sat there and had their masks on. And, um, and so that was great. Um, Heather asked me to talk about the positions um, that were in the budget and the ones that have actually been filled because um, we talked earlier about um, not filling all the positions in, in uh, case we um, run into issues with uh, state funding as we go through the year. Uh, so um, in Pond Cove, we had uh, in the budget a first grade teacher, which we have filled. We are in the process now of advertising for the guidance counselor, so that position will be filled. Uh, we had a, um, a special services ed tech position in the budget, which due to a change in enrollment, we do not need to fill. So um, that's a position that won't, we, we won't be filling at this point. Um, at the high school, we filled the 0.4 FTE French teacher, the 0.75 science teacher, and the 0.6 FTE math teacher. We did not fill the EdTech 1 position uh, for the library. The athletic groundskeeper wasn't filled. And um, in the facilities budget, we had uh, two custodial positions that we are working on filling, but have not filled as yet, and um, uh, as well as a maintenance person for the town and school, which has not been filled yet. So that's the status of positions. Um, we did receive word uh, last week that we were approved for the coronavirus relief fund, which was the $1,052,760. And this is the funding that the federal funding that must be spent by December 31st. So any any positions that are filled um, through these this grant um, will only be until uh, December 30, uh, 31st. So some of the uh, items that are included in this grant and we we can go back uh, by September 30th and do a revision. So if we find that our needs have changed as we um, get into the year but before uh, the end of September, we can go back and do a revision. Uh, so some of the items that are included in this grant are storage containers to hold extra furniture. As you've heard, we, have, we did move uh, quite a bit of furniture out of the classrooms. Um, one bus and one van. We did not get approved for a bus, uh, a large bus this year. So in order to help with transportation, we are, um, a bus is included. And the van that was in the budget that we were going to lease, um, the purchase price um, for that van was included in our uh, grant application. A uh, tent at the high school. Lots of PPE and signage, uh, some plexiglass shields, portable warming and cooling carts for lunches and breakfasts, packaging for lunches and breakfasts, computer equipment um, and um, ordering software, nine bus monitors. And we have been advertising like crazy for those bus monitors. And only, we only had one application, applicant um, who we did hire. So the bus drivers are working without monitors on the buses. Um, but as I was uh, watching them today, they were um, doing the, uh, handing out the uh, hand sanitizer and checking the uh, attendance on the buses and, and doing everything. So hopefully we will have some more bus monitor applicants. Um, if we don't, by the end of September, that's something that we might go in and revise. Um, in our application. Um, extra custodial staff, which we will advertise for, three permanent substitute teachers. And I know that we ha have hired one at Pond Cove as of today. Um, I haven't heard that the middle school and the high school have hired their regular subs or their, um, but uh, their permanent subs, but that may have happened. Uh, the HVAC work, professional development for teachers for remote and hybrid learning environments. We bought the Zoom program for teachers to use. 
um, identic kid uh, program and badges, uh, equipment and software for both hybrid and remote learning. So um, that about covers what was in that grant. I think about a million dollars being a lot of money, but it, it really goes fast and we have lots of things on our waiting list. Um, if, if we do go in, if and when we do go in with revisions. Um, just a little update, and this is changing every day. So um, <clears throat> these numbers uh, are pretty accurate. The high school has 51 students who are enrolled in the 100% remote program and 491 enrolled in the hybrid program, which is about 9%. Um, the middle school has 91 students enrolled in the 100% remote learning program and 308 enrolled in the hybrid program. And Pond Cove has somewhere between 92 and 96 um, enrolled in the 100% uh, remote program and 410 in the hybrid model. So um, it's running about, um, about almost 20%. Uh, in regards to the sports program, which I know uh, lots of people are um, interested in and concerned about, um, I think probably everyone heard last week that um, MPA submitted some guidelines, their guidelines to the CDC and the DOE, and um, they were asked uh, to go back and revise their guidelines, or they decided to go back and revise their guidelines. Um, we as public schools are expected to comply with CDC guidelines. Um, MPA's guidelines were not in, in uh, compliance with CDC guidelines. So we are hearing, I, actually I heard that they were supposed to meet today, but I haven't heard anything whether that actually happened or not. But we are hearing that MPA is going back to CDC and DOE with revisions. So if those revisions are acceptable, we'll most likely enter into the fall sports season for those sports that are not considered high risk. Some of the sports that we have are considered high risk. Um, Right now, we are considered to be in, we went into phase four, um, as most of the Cumberland County uh, districts did, did as well. And phase four is the conditioning season, uh, the condi conditioning phase. So you will see, I believe it started tonight, um, or today after school and tonight, and that's where Jeff Thorak is right now. Um, coaches are working with small numbers of students, being very careful about complying with CDC guidelines of 14 feet social distancing without masks, six feet with masks, and um, masks must be worn at all times unless players are involved in what they call rigorous activity, and that's mostly running. Um, so for students who are involved in a sport or sports that are considered high risk and may not be offered this year, depending on uh, what happens with MPA and CDC. Um, our coaches and Jeff have been working on offerings that will continue to build skills in those sports, um, even though they, they may, we may not be doing um, interscholastic sports. Um, and they, there will be an activity for those students um, to participate, to keep their conditioning up, um, and to improve their skills. So uh, we have no word um, other than that on sports at, at this time, but you will be seeing um, our student athletes um, and their coaches out working on the fields this week. So um, it was very exciting to be around the schools. I know, as everybody said, things may not be perfect, but um, I think it was a, a really good day today. Um, it was a lot of hard work. Uh, we have an amazing administrative team and they worked really hard to make this happen. So uh, thank you all. I was muted, sorry. Um, you talked about the enrollment numbers. Oh, I forgot to talk about the, uh, the new hires. Um, there is, yeah, there new is hires. A, yeah, there is a list of um, 
of teachers and and actually our accounts payable uh, coordinator is on that list as well of our new hires um, and we had a new one added to today uh, Joseph Forsyth um, uh, who is going to be a middle middle school classroom teacher at seventh and eighth grade so um, you can see our list right there and um, most of those people are on, on the ground running and have been involved. Um, Joseph is coming to us from Pennsylvania, so um, and he's under contract there. So um, we have to uh, wait to hear uh, from the superintendent about when he can start. Great. Um, I know that hiring uh, takes time. Um, there is a process, and that it takes time to do and. Um, so thank you for all who were involved in the, the hiring process to get the staffing here that we needed. It's really good. Um, okay, we have new business. Can I have a motion, please? For I move we approve the tech integrator job description. Uh, may I have a second? I second that. Is that Laura? Kimberly. Yeah. Kimberly, sorry. Um, I'm wondering if somebody can speak to the job description here, the tech integrator description. Donna, is that in your purview or? Um, so actually Kathy was gonna speak about it, but she's not here, so I can talk a little bit about okay. it. We've been working on this um, since before uh, we went out in March. Um, trying to get um, the, the responsibilities of the position has, have changed a bit. So we wanted to get it in line with what our uh, tech integrators were actually doing. And the, this went to the tech integrators for their feedback. Um, they did give their feedback and we took that into consideration. So um, it was fi time to finalize the job description. Um, so that's where we are right now. Great. Um, any other comments or questions from the board members before we head into a vote? All right, so this is for the approval of the job description. Um, Heather Altenberg is yay. Kimberly Carr. Yay. Phil Saucier. Yay. Elizabeth Seifries. Yay. Nasser is not here. Hope Straw. Yay. And Laura Danino. Yay. Uh, just trying to admit people as they come while I'm doing this as well. Um, and I have a motion for item 7B, please. I move we approve uh, the nominations for fall coaches as defined in our packet. May I have a second? Second. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> any comments or questions? Discussion? Um, well, I guess I would like to say a few things. One is um, there's quite a few here. Uh, it looks like maybe 20, just by rough 2025. Um, I want to thank the coaches for their patience um, as we waited to do this hiring process. I believe it's done usually much sooner, but because of COVID-19, we um, wanted to see how things went. So thank you very much for your patience and your willingness to step in um, for these roles. As always, uh, these stipend positions um, are what help to make these students well-rounded students. Um, the coaching is just one aspect. Um, theater and arts are all the other aspects that um, help to create these well-rounded students. But thank you very much for stepping up and for being willing to, um, <coughs> to be coaches in our district. Um, so... If there's no more discussion, 
Heather Altenberg is a yay. Kimberly Carr? Yay. Phil Saucier? Yay. Elizabeth Seifries? Yay. Now, if there's not here, Hope Straw? Yay. And Laura Danino? Yay. Thank you. Uh, next motion, please. I move we approve um, the 2020 to 2021 administrative personnel nominations as defined in our packet. I have a second. Second. Thank you. Any questions or comments from the board? Again, I would like to thank um, teachers in these positions that are willing to step beyond their, um, I guess, regular classroom curriculum and take on more work uh, and more responsibility. Um, very much appreciated. Uh, Heather Altenberg is a yay. Kimberly Carr. Yay. Phil Saucier. Yay. Elizabeth Seifries. Yay. Now if there's not here, Hope Straw. Yay. And Laura Danino. Yay. Okay. Next motion. Nominations for the following committees. May I have a motion, please? I move we consider to approve nominations for the Evaluation Steering Committee and the Recertification Committee. May I have a second? I second that, Kimberly. Thank you. Any comments or question? Again, I want to offer my gratitude for uh, taking on re more responsibility in these committees from various teachers um, and staff members. Um, there are no boxes to vote, but we'll go ahead. Heather Altberg is a yay. Do we vote on this, Donna? Yes. The boxes aren't right no. there. Yeah, okay. Just an oversight. Heather Altenberg is a yay. Kimberly Carr? Yay. Phil Saucier? Yay. Elizabeth Seifries? Yay. Hope Straw? Yay. And Laura Danino? Yay. Great. Uh, next, please. I move we approve uh, the peer mentors, mentors and educators as defined in our packet. Second. Uh, any questions or comments? Okay. Once again, thank you for stepping in for these roles, those who have done so. Heather Altenberg is a yay. Kimberly Carr is a yay. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I don't know where that came from. Kimberly Carr. <laughs> yes, I'm a yay. <laughs> yay. All right, Phil Sassier. I'm not going to speak for you. <laughs> yes, yay. <laughs> Elizabeth Seifries. Yay. Uh, no Nasser Hope Straw. Yay. Oh. Laura Danino. Yay. All right, thank you. Um, all right, so next up, what I'm seeing on my agenda, Donda, is school board agenda requests. I'm afraid I, do I have the right? Yeah, I think I have There's one more to approve. Yeah. Okay, because I, I just tried to print it from the, the town website, and um, this is the updated version that I got, so it doesn't have that on it. Uh, it wasn't um, updated on the town website yet. That's why I made the mistake. So I don't have it in front of me, so I'm just going to say, is there, there's a motion to be made about the DEI right now that I can't see? Can somebody yep. please make that? I can say it. It's right here. So I move we Thank create you. a Cape Elizabeth School District Task Force to address DEI within the district to be comprised of several school board members, administrators, teachers, and students. 
May I have a second, please? I second that, Kimberly. Thank, thank you, Kimberly. Um, discussion or comment? Donna, would you, uh, Kathy was gonna speak a little bit to it tonight, but since she's not here, are you able to um, sure. talk about um, it a bit? Sure. Um, so, um, there have been uh, many um, event, events and studies going on throughout the summer as well as um, into the, the PD sessions, the two weeks of PD we had. And um, there's, there's a lot of energy behind um, the, the diversity, equity, and inclusion um, movement, I guess. And in, in an effort, um, thinking back to last June when uh, we had our um, school board workshop and lots of great discussion on this, um, everyone felt that we didn't want to stop there, that we wanted to keep this effort going. The town council has also, um, is also developing a committee um, to work on this and we felt like the school district um, would, should do this as well. And Kathy's willing to, um, to head up that committee as, as an administrator. Uh, so we felt that this should go to the board for a vote about um, whether we wanted to, to create this task force. Mm -hmm. I agree. I think I'd just like to, uh, cause I was in that meeting with, with you, Donna and Kathy. And um, I think back in June after the, the board workshop where people came in to talk about anti-racism and, um, and the desire to have those conversations in the school, um, it, it became very difficult to, uh, to come up with plans to reopen our school and handle such a big topic as anti-racism and what does that mean in our district and how do we deal with diversity? And so it did have to take a little bit of a back burner, but um, I, I think it's important for people to know that it did not fall through the cracks, that we don't have intention for it to fall through the cracks. And this is our stepping stone to, to bringing it back into the conversation. And um, the best way we decided to do it was to get a committee started, a task force, a task force started um, and Kathy has offered to, to chair it, to, to lead it um, and then and see where we wanna go from here. If we want more listening sessions, if we want goals um, and to, to really talk about how we can better our schools from these discussions. Um, so that is us making hopefully an attempt to get this ball rolling again, get this conversation. Now that we've started schools, we've, we've got our plans underway, things are moving forward, we can bring it back to the forefront a little bit more. So that's what I wanted to say about it in regards to our meeting that we had had. Are there any questions from board members before voting? All right, I'm not seeing any questions. So, uh, Heather Altenberg is a yay. Kimberly Carr. Yay. Phil Saucier. Yay. Elizabeth Seifrey. Yay. Uh, Nasser Shear is not here, so Hope Straw. Yay. And Laura Danino. Yay. Fantastic. Um, now I'm nervous that my agenda is totally wrong. Is next on it agenda request? Yes. Seems a little yeah. out of order to me. Yes. But are there any are there any other are there any ag uh, agenda requests for the future mm -hmm. from board members? Okay. Remember that you can always make requests by sending an email to myself or to Donna, and um, it doesn't have to happen just right now. And that's true for the public if you're interested in having something that's available as well through email. Um, next are school reading, second readings of policy. I'm gonna hand this over to Hope. Hi, thank you. Hi. 
Um, so at the last meeting, uh, you will recall, uh, hopefully, that I mentioned um, we have a couple of revisions to policies related to the updates to the Title IX um, requirements. So uh, over the last couple of years, there has been guidance from uh, at the federal level regarding Title IX, and that became law recently, uh, earlier in the summer, and then school districts were given a mandate to adopt new policies to reflect the new Title IX requirements uh, in August. So we had, um, we held a policy meeting earlier in August and we looked over um, what was presented from the Maine School Management Association, which were effectively uh, policies written by the state um, sort of attorneys who, um, digested the Title IX updates, which were extensive, and then created updates to the policies to reflect that. So this is a second reading, so we're gonna, hopefully we'll vote on this tonight and we need to have this in place. Um, and I'll just go over what, um, I think we're gonna do them, or we do them one at a time. Mm -hmm. So the first one is AC, which is our non-discrimination slash equal opportunity and affirmative action policy. And this one doesn't have a whole, a huge amount of updates, um, but the specific changes that are of note are, um, we take, you may all recall that last, last year sometime we added the term, it doesn't only list um, discrimination, it's a general policy of, of non-discrimination by the district, but we list, um, discrimination based on sex, sexual orientation, gender identity, and you'll recall last year we added and gender um, expression. Um, and now those terms are actually fully defined. So the, the ter each term, sexual orientation, gender identity, gender expression are kind of fully fleshed out in the procedures for this policy. And we were given um, standard definitions that are based on the Title IX um, uh, uh, legislation to put into our, our procedures. So you'll see this document is, is pretty much identical to what we had before with the exception that it does it no longer says um, gender expression because it's folded into gender identity. Um, and uh, it also includes age. So the old policy didn't include age. Uh, so I'm, that's, that's effectively the changes here. There's no, I don't believe there's any sort of material uh, impact change on, on this policy AC. I think we have to vote on this one. Um, we're gonna vote individually. So will you make the motion? <laughs> sure, 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 sure. Okay, I move that we adopt um, the policy AC um, uh, draft as included in our packets. Second. Okay. Uh, thank you for that. I got kicked out for a moment, so thank you for following through and continuing on. Um, Heather Altenberg is a yay. Kimberly Carr? Yay. Phil Saucier? Yay. Elizabeth Cypress. Yay. Uh, Hope Straw. Yay. And Laura Danino. Yay. Great. And then Hope, would you like to go on to the next policy, please? Sure thing. Okay, the next one is ACAA, which is Harassment and Sexual Harassment of Students. And this one has a little bit more, um, more to the changes. So what, um, what we have is we have, um, um, it's taken out and very clearly delineated between harassment, just sort of general harassment based on various classes and sexual harassment. And sexual harassment is where we kind of get very specific about how we treat it because it, will, it, is, it is the thing that effectively could trigger, trigger Title IX uh, obligations for the district and Title IX protections for the, the students. Um, so what it does is it, it pulls out harassment and sexual harassment, and then within the sexual harassment definition, it also then gets very granular in that it talks about Title IX sexual harassment, and these are the incidents where 
we, we sort of trigger, trigger Title IX requirements and there's a set of obligations we have with respect to uh, complaint investigations and, and, and approaching those issues. And then there's sexual harassment under Maine law. Um, and you'll see if you look at the policy, it gets very clear about types of Title IX sexual harassment and there's three different definitions. Um, most notably, it specifically line, um, outlines quid pro quo, hostile environment, and for our purposes, which we kind of talked about a great, a great deal last year, sexual assault, dating violence, et cetera. So it's very, very explicit in a way that it hadn't been previously. So um, that is a notable uh, change there. Also, um, it gets very clear about reporting requirements. So it's very clear all employees are um, fall under the umbrella of reporting requirements and those reports go directly to the Title IX officer who um, currently that's a position held by Kathy Stankard. Um, so that is also something clarified here. And to the extent there are differences between ACAA, what we currently have in place and this, that covers it. All right, thank you. Any questions or comments? Okay, so for the vote, Heather Altenberg is a yay. Kimberly Carr? Yay. Did we have a motion, Heather? Sorry. I thought we did. Rewind. Maybe we didn't. I, okay, go ahead for the I, motion. I did it I last time, so I'll, I'll do it. Uh, I move right. we approve the updated uh, uh, draft vi version of ACAA. Second. I have a second. Thank you, Elizabeth. I thought we had, my apologies. So Heather Altenberg is a yay. Kimberly Carr. Yay. Phil Saucier. Yay. Elizabeth Seifries. Yay. Hope Straw. Yay. Laura Danino. Yay. And then for C, Hope, can you come in for the last one? Sure, so the um, final make one. Make a motion maybe to start with. Sure, I, I, I move we consider uh, for approval the revisions to policy ACAB, which is uh, harassment and sexual harassment of school employees as included Great. in our packet. Second. Is there, thank you, Elizabeth. Okay, discussion, hope. Okay, and this is, has the exact same updates as the student version, um, getting very granular and clear about harassment, sexual harassment and the types. And I just want to make a final note um, with these updates, it came with a collection of training and um, revisions to how we react to complaints. And I wanted to note that Kathy Sankard has done a, a great deal of work uh, behind the scenes on this. And um, I just wanted to acknowledge that. And, and to the extent these require implementation, that's falling on, on her shoulders to take care of that. Any comments, questions? Heather Altenberg, yay. Kimberly Carr. Yay. Phil Saucier. Yay. Elizabeth Seifries. Yay. Hope Straw. Yay. And Laura Danino. Yay. Great, so announcements for upcoming meetings. Uh, we have on here the school board retreat for September 22nd. Um, there, one of the board members cannot make it at that time. So I am going to suggest the 29th. Um, it's a week later. I think it'll be nice as well since there's the rolling out of school. There's, there's no rush to get right in there um, so early. Um, we do have policy at three on the 29th, just... As a I do. I know. I saw that. Um, so we might have to revisit this and then um, and and then make a formal announcement. So board members, I will send out um, a follow up, but know that the twenty second can't happen as of now. That's been decided. So we will find a different date for the retreat, and maybe it's not the twenty ninth. Maybe it's another day. We'll figure it out though. 
and then we'll post it and make it public. We do have a school board workshop coming up on the 22nd at 630. Um, and Donna, do you want to speak to what the topic is? Uh, I think we we're going to talk about rolling. Did we, have we decided that quite yet? I don't think we decided the topic yet. I, right. I think we were talking about maybe uh, having, okay. Yep. We're still working on that one. We'll get back to you on that one too. But we do know policy committee is happening via Zoom September 29th at three o'clock. All right. Um, so we do have an executive session. May I have a movement for the executive session? I move we enter into executive session pursuant to one MRSA subsection 4056E for the purpose of consultation between school unit and attorney. May I have a second? Second. second. Uh, Heather Altenberg, yay. Kimberly Carr? Yay. Uh, Phil Saucier? Yay. Yeah. Elizabeth Seifries? Yay. Hope Straw? Yay. And Laura Danino. Yay. Okay. So everyone. Everybody, but the board, if you can leave the meeting, uh, the executive session is just well, for I board did, members. I did see our attorney come in, so I believe she's here. I do see Melissa as well. Melissa, you better stay. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, a few people still hanging on there. Okay. Are you there? We need you to leave the meeting. I worry about this. Sometimes people are on it. They go do some dinner. Um, she's not listening. We probably should have a separate Zoom invitation for uh, if we have future. Yep. yep. Executive session. That is we become can obvious. Log on to that and right? log back in. I yep. think that we can somehow stop her. Is yeah. there a way to con contact Jen? Should we ask her if there's a way to kick somebody out? <laughs> you can make you can just, um, create a separate meeting room, but maybe you don't know how to do that. I could do it. Oh, like a breakout not, room. Yeah. Donna is a host. I'm no longer a host. If you want to make Melissa Huey a host, and if you can I mean, do I, it. I think I can do a breakout room. Oh, five participants per room. That's not going to work. Nope. Oh, no. she's gone. She, she, she left. I could run back and forth to the various rooms. <laughs> I think, are we still recording too? We've gone. We need to stop recording. I'll do the stop Good recording. Good call. 